Hey all, and welcome back to Fuzzy Dutchy Gaming and what is probably the final episode of the Zero to Hero Tornado Shot playthrough. Now the idea for those that might be new to the series was to try and get a very good all-rounder build to take on any content that I fancied trying. I didn't want to go Magic Find or Pure Mappa because there are a ton of builds who have already done this and it's proven that it works really, really well. So before we jump in, let's talk about whether the idea has worked. Did we build this great all-rounder? Well, the answer is both yes and no. It has done Wave 30 simulacrums, but I wouldn't say it's particularly comfortable. It does map really, really well, and for things like destructive plane invitations, it is a dream. It dispatches normal bosses with ease and can do uber bosses, but not brilliantly. So that's where the yes part comes in. It has done all the content that I wanted it to do, and I can pick and choose what I want to. The no part is that it's basically a jack of all trades and master of none. Why would you make a build that can do everything but only everything at a mediocre level? If you want to uber boss, you want a build like Penance Brander Dissipation that can melt uber bosses in seconds. You don't want a build that might take you five minutes to do an uber boss and you're not guaranteed to complete it. Same with Simulacrums. You want a build that can guarantee, maybe apart from a really horrible selection of mods, that you're going to get through to wave 30, you're going to go decently, and you're going to get five layers of rewards at least in each round. Now, I did foresee earlier that it is obviously going to be better to target build a character based on the content you like doing the most. And I would have been much better taking the money I've spent, which is probably around 600 divines, and splitting it and making three builds. One for uber bosses, one for mapping, and one for simulacrums. Main reason I didn't do that is because I couldn't be bothered to take two more characters through the campaign. So I could have just get one character to do it all. And I think the answer is no. So I'll talk about the build and the limitations once I go through the character. I will reiterate, as in previous videos, I highly recommend against building like this, as it is definitely too much to spend on a build that basically maps well, but nowhere near enough single target to trivialize Ubers, and not enough layers of defenses and sustain to take on things like Simulacrum. So let's go over the gear. We'll start with the bow. It was essentially the bow I had before, but we've got one with two additional arrows. This was about 200 divines. The quiver, I bought the base for 18 divines. It's about the same at the moment. So this is a fractured broadhead arrow quiver with one additional arrow. So what I essentially needed to do was roll high elemental damage with attack prefixes. So in this case, I use fire damage essences until I got crit multi, T1 with an open prefix and an open suffix or annul them off to get what we needed. I've then used the open prefix to put suffixes cannot be changed and scoured. So we're then basically left with our fractured arrows and our crit multi with bows. You're then crafting cannot roll attack mods. What this does is it fills your last suffix, and then it means that every time you slam with an exalt, you're guaranteed to get life and damage your bows. Because all of the other mods I've got on there are attack, I can basically keep exalting and annulling until I get decent life and decent damage of bows, and that's what we're left with. This is quite RNG. It might cost you, like me, I did it quite cheap. I think the whole bow, including... The purchase in the base was about 30, but it could cost you 50, 60, depending what level of mods you go for and how unlucky you get. Uh, the helmet, again, we've recrafted just because I needed to fit in Fizz Taken as Fire to get myself a bit of extra defenses. And we've also added in mana reservation efficiency of skills. Main reason for that is because we were getting this from an anoint on the amulet, but I wanted to free up that to get some damage. The rings are exactly the same as they were before. Strength, Fractured, Life Resistances int fractured life resistances chest piece hasn't changed a uh, corrupted lightning core with increased damage as the implicit looking at this now i should have actually spent a bit of money getting a better rolled one 61 life is pretty much the min roll it would have been nice to get one closer to 80 the gloves we've also recrafted to get a bit more damage into them so we have packed quite a lot into this so we've got our attack speed at t1 we've got our fractured suppression we've got decent life and then we've got crafted crit chance and le damage and then we've still got the suppression and attack speed uh, implicits. The boots are still exactly the same. Corrupted, increased life, Rallakesh's impatience. And then the belt is still mage blood. The flask haven't changed since the last episode. It's a topaz flask because we take so much fizz as lightning. Reducing that lightning damage just gives us a much bigger hit pool. A quicksilver flask, silver flask, and then a jade flask. So before we go on to the skill tree and the jewels, I'm just going to go through the skills because there are things that happen in the tree because of some of the skills that we're using and it makes sense to do it this way around. In terms of the main six link, we've been able to change this up because we don't need GMP anymore because we have enough arrows with our ascendancy, the skill tree, the bow and the quiver. So we are running tornado shot, 
Early damage with attacks or awakened now. Mirage Archer, Inspiration, Trinity, and Crit Damage. In the helmet, we have our Sniper's Mark, Life Tap, and then I have a Flame Dash for movement, and then just a Mark on hit. So obviously, automate that Sniper's Mark. In the bow, I've just got, at the moment, a pretty random six-link uh, Mana Forge Arrow setup. So it's Inspiration to basically make the Mana Cost zero with all of the other minus Mana Cost that we have. So we've got Frenzy, Blast Rain, Mana Forge Arrows, Storm Rain, and Ice Shot. Then in the gloves, I have just another small setup for single target, which is Mana Forged, Lightning Arrow, Inspiration, Burning Arrow. No idea whether these are the right combo, but they're kind of a little bit of supplementary damage anyway. I think as long as you have Blast Rain and Storm Rain, these are kind of the two that give you the big single target increases. And then in the boots, we have Grace, which is Vile version. We have Haste, that's replaced what used to be Purity of Elements. Got a Defiance Banner, which we can run for free thanks to one of our charms. And then we just have a portal. Because we're running Here is Truth, we get precision for free. We don't need a gem to actually use it, so it frees up a socket. I have replaced the anointment with Farsight because I was slightly under accuracy capped. And this overall just give a decent ban for the buck. It gives you damage, attack speed, and accuracy. So we'll move on to the tree. So before I mentioned I was running Purity of Elements because it was an easy way to solve I'm at immunity and I didn't quite have enough resistances. So the first change to call out is adding back Ancestral Vision. This just gives me a fat 50% chance to avoid elemental ailments because I'm spell suppression cat. We have that which was taken, which has evasion rating per frenzy charge, allies and you have increased early res and chance to avoid elemental ailments while phasing. And we'll go through why that's important in a second. And then the charms I have Still chance to suppress spell damage and banner skills have no reservation. We have crit chance at max power charges, but we've also added in chance to avoid elite ailments mark phasing. And then we've still got chance to suppress spell damage and increase effect of onslaught. The reason I've gone for those phasing mods is that gets you to 100% ailment immunity when I'm phasing. And that's where haste came into it because that means I can now run this watcher's eye, which gives me phasing while I have haste. It gives me a decent boost to attack damage while I'm affected by precision. So now I've basically, with adding more elemental resistances into the build and getting phasing into the build, I've been able to replace Purity of Elements to make the build have a bit more damage and be quicker across the ground and more attack speed. In terms of other changes, the Brutal Restraint is still the same. I couldn't find one that was much better than this that would make it worth the upgrade. And then we've just changed this tool slightly. It's now got increased resistances because I was only just cold resistance capped. So adding this in just makes it a bit more comfortable with Ellie weakness. I am still slightly low on cold resistance that if I could be bothered to fix, I would. But I think I'm about done with the build. Like I said, I do like Tornado Shot, but I'm not sure I want to carry on playing it because this build hasn't really worked the way I wanted it to. So I'd have to just rebuild the whole thing. And I'm not sure I really want to. I have tons of currency sitting in my stash because it is just impossible not to earn currency at the moment. But I just don't think I want to play another Tornado Shot build. So I'll leave the POB uh, in the description as it is. I would think DPS wise, it's hard to calculate because how many arrows do you hit with on each target? It's difficult to know. But per arrow, it's about 2.6 million DPS. And then we have our supplementary Mana Forge setup. So I think full DPS is somewhere between 10 to 25 million. It's pretty impossible to know. Because with Tornado Shot, it depends on where you stand, what the hitbox is, how far your arrows have gone. So there is going to be quite a big range of single target, but it feels comfortable enough for the majority of content. So I mentioned I'd come on to like the pitfalls of kind of trying to make an all-round build, especially on an ascendancy like Deadeye. Let's talk about defenses first. In terms of your defensive layers, it's very hard to get lots of defensive layers in as a Deadeye because on the right-hand side of the tree, you are pigeonholed into essentially evasion and ailment immunity and spell suppression the way you really want to make an all-round character is to get more layers of defenses block even though some people think it's not a big layer of defense because you can only block up to 75 percent it makes a massive difference for things that shotgun so one noticeable thing which i'll show a clip of here now this was when i hadn't quite finished upgrading the build but i tried to simulacrum and kosis got multi-proj and basically whenever he did his like fire projectile attack it would land on the ground at AoE, that AoE shotguns and you can't evade AoE. And that was literally insta-killing me every time. And at this point in time, I had about 20k max fizz hit 
and about 30k Ellie res and decent chaos res hit. So I was tanky enough to take pretty much any one hit in that simulacrum regardless of the mods. But when you get bad mods like extra damage and you get extra prog and extra AoE, I couldn't avoid that attack and it basically one shot me every time. So I did do a couple of simulacrums after that and completed one. But I think with this sort of build, if you get the wrong lineup of mods, you're not making it through wave 30. So in my eyes, that's a fail because I can't just go, right, I'm going to go and farm 50 simulacrums and guarantee that I'm going to get through at least, you know, 90 to 95% of those. I may only get through like 50% and that's not good enough. Life is also quite difficult when you're playing this sort of build because you might want very specific gear that doesn't have life on it. We also don't have an access to a ton of life nodes on that side of the tree. So getting up to 4.2k was actually not that easy. And I do think to feel much more tanky, I would want five and a half and six, which without giving up loads and loads of stuff on the build, it's not really possible. In terms of damage, mapping feels yeah, absolutely fine. It should do. We've got like over 2 million damage per arrow. So we're going to obliterate nearly everything in every mapping environment. It was fine doing wisp maps, although when you got to like big juice in T16s, it still did feel a little bit like it could do with an improvement. And that's why I think I should have just not been so greedy and said, I don't do uber bosses. I don't know why I wanted a build that could also do uber bosses and simulacrums because I never do them. I should have just set out from the start that I want to do mapping and I would want it to, in case I want to, be able to do things like invitations. And that's why I didn't want to go full on magic find or full on mapping because invitations feel pretty bad when you do that content. And I do really like doing invitations along with general mapping. So overall, the damage is certainly good enough for what I do, but it's not good enough to go, right, I'm just going to go and melt Uber Cirrus and we'll guarantee that is a completed encounter because i don't think it is i think you could definitely fail it with this sort of damage and although the defenses i think for a dead eye are good the damage isn't good enough for your defenses to hold up and what i mean by that is i can take one hit off pretty much any enemy that i come across with any map mods but i don't have amazing single target if we get a tanky enemy that's got loads of mods on it it's wisped up it might take me five to 10 seconds to get that enemy down. And then your defenses need to be better because you're standing there taking damage and you're more likely to get overlapping damage, shotguns, big crits and things like that, or lots of things combining together. And that's why I think people just go damage on this build. It is better form of defense, essentially. Yes, you might only have a 5K max fizz hit taken, but you're never going to take any hits because you're obliterating the whole screen. So if I was to rebuild the character, I would just dump all of the fizz taken as Ellie, get Harry's chest piece back in go omni and just get triple the damage and accept that every now and again i'll die but for the most part i'm going to be obliterating everything that i come across in a mapping environment and then the last part that definitely comes into it is my lacking knowledge i guess in terms of putting builds together that are different than what i'm used to so i've gone very very simple i've just got mostly rares some uniques that everyone uses and kind of tried and tested skill trees there are probably a million better ways to build this character but i wanted to do it myself and just learn as i go along because it's so easy to earn currency in this iteration of the game that i just felt even if it failed which i think it has i could sell the character off and with all the stuff in my stash i'll be sitting on like a thousand divine so i can then just try another build and just experiment which is probably what i'll do for the rest of the league i don't care what level they get up to i just want to try different skills and have some fun so what we'll just do is go and do a quick map showcase of what I'm doing at the moment. Don't copy this Atlas tree. It's not super efficient. I just wanted to do Delhi and Ultimatum. So I've just put some random nodes together and I'm just throwing in a gilded Ultimatum Scarab. It's more just to show kind of how the build performs. Uh, so I'm putting Delhi on there with the map device. I don't really care what mods you get as long as it's not reflect because my mana forward setup will kill me. Any influence you want doesn't really matter. And then all I'm doing is going around, getting my deli until I've got four to five rewards, kill the boss to move those rewards up a level, then going back. And as long as it's not stone circles or survival, because I still hate those, then we'll do the ultimatum. So we'll just run through. I kind of wait a little while for things to spawn because otherwise your kills don't register. You probably don't need to do this in all honesty. It's more force of habit. Oh, I've also got essences in. I forgot about that. So you just run through. And it is like, yeah, really simple. I haven't died in absolutely ages. It doesn't mean I'm not going to now, but. So you just run through until you get to five rewards. Normally is what I'm doing. And now I'm just going to kill the boss to move that layer of rewards up. 
So we've got to five, so we'll move in and find the boss. Take those down, that goes to six, and then we'll go and find the ultimatum and we'll turn Delhi off. There's the ultimatum. So at this point, we've got enough of our Delhi to carry on. We've got stone circles, brilliant. Um, so I will cut to another map because I really don't want to do that because I don't have any Atlas passives. Um, so I'll be back with you in a second. Right, so we found our ultimatum. So we'll go and do this. It's defeat enemies. And we'll just pick random ones, I guess. The only one I'm avoiding, even though I've got extra lightning resistance, the lightning storm cool things do an absolute ton of damage. So even with 50% less damage taken from a keystone and... A topaz flask that has killed me once when they've overlapped so i'm trying to avoid that um we'll just take kind of everything else because we've got i think okay defense for a dead eye and the keystone where you take 50 percent less damage for the most part we can take most mods on this the only combination i avoid like i say is lightning and the one that makes the circle smaller because you basically can't go anywhere without dying um, losing charges is fine because we've got frenzy on here and we don't gain any other charges And I tend to not look at the rewards. I should. I was earlier. Um, and I definitely need to look at rewards because I've had two Fracturing Orbs and two Enlightens, which I would have been at risk of losing because I was just going through um, and no-braining it. I think I realised with the Enlightens and collected them, but I think with the Fracturing Orbs, I went all the way to the end um, and it was quite horrible mod. So obviously, if I did that in the future, I'd probably pay a bit more attention. Uh, we've got four layers of ruin. We have to be careful here. Um, five. Whoops. Because we fail at seven. We might fail here. I don't know what keeps killing me, but something does. Uh, right. We're probably going to have to finish there because this is a rubbish map anyway. And I don't know how I got six layers of ruin, but I did. Um, terrible rewards, but we'll take them. I should have paid more attention rather than just chatting rubbish the whole way through. I don't think that's any good, but we'll take it anyway. So we're going to have a look at the stash quickly because I haven't bought anything for quite a while. So I've just been sticking all of my deli orbs and everything um, into my stash. And we have got, yeah, tons to liquidate if I can be bothered. But at this stage, I don't know what I want to do next. So we're just keeping it for now. So as I mentioned, I had two fracturing orbs as a reward from Ultimatum. It was basically the two div cards that give you two fracturing orbs. Didn't duplicate, unfortunately. That would have made it four and they're 42 divines each. I've had two Enlightens, I've had some raw Divine Drops, had about 12 Inscribed Ultimatums. These sell for like 1.1 to 1.2 divs each and literally instantly. And I'm sitting on about, I won't count them, it's 120-ish Deli Orbs, I think. Obviously, loads and loads of things that we can sell, like Catalysts. We've got nine Tainted Catalysts from when we found the Trial Master. And then we're sitting on 148 Divines and, yeah, various other bits of currency and some essences so overall i would think easily i would think 250 divines worth of stuff if i wanted to go further and make more upgrades but i can't really upgrade this build anymore the way i built it because i kind of haven't done a very good job so it would be a case of keeping the bits that i want for the build selling the rest and then buying new stuff but i would rather get onto another build than spend more time uh, on this one but it has kind of done the job i think that's it for the video in the series there's not much more to go through. I certainly did have fun doing it. And this is a league where I felt I could just trial and error. And if it didn't work, it didn't really matter because it is so easy to earn decent currency. Literally any mechanic you pick, as long as you concentrate on that mechanic and you're efficient, you're going to make a lot of currency or just do what everyone else is doing and make an obscene amount of money magic finding. That's it for the video. Thank you very much for watching. Take care and see you in the next one.